Byzantine silk is silk woven in the Byzantine Empire from about the 4th century until the fall of Constantinople in 1453. The Byzantine capital of Constantinople was the first significant silk weaving center in Europe. Silk was one of the most important commodities in the Byzantine economy, used by the state both as a means of payment and of diplomacy. Raw silk was bought from China and made up into fine fabrics that commanded high prices throughout the world. Later, silkworms were smuggled into the empire and the overland silk trade gradually became less important. After the reign of Justinian I, the manufacture and sale of silk became an imperial monopoly, only processed in imperial factories, and sold to authorized buyers. Byzantine silks are significant for their brilliant colors, use of gold thread, and intricate designs that approach the pictorial complexity of the embroidery in loom-woven fabric. Byzantium dominated silk production in Europe throughout the early Middle Ages, until the establishment of the Italian silk weaving industry in the 12th century and the conquest and breakup of the Byzantine Empire in the Fourth Crusade. Development in the time of the Roman Empire, silk textiles reached the West Overland via the Silk Road across Asia from China, passing through the Parthian Empire and later Sassanid Empire to trading centers in Syria. Imports of raw silk, silk yarn, and finished fabrics are all recorded, but the techniques of producing these textiles from the silkworm Bombyx Mori remained a closely guarded secret of the Chinese until the Emperor of the East Justinian arranged to have silkworm eggs smuggled out of Central Asia in 553-54, setting the stage for the flowering of the Byzantine silk weaving industry. New types of looms and weaving techniques also played a part. Plain woven or tabby silks had circulated in the Roman world, and patterned damask silks in increasingly complex geometric designs appear from the mid-3rd century, where faced compound twills were developed not later than 600, and polychrome compound twills became the standard weave for Byzantine silks for the next several centuries. Monochrome lampus weaves became fashionable around 1000 in both Byzantine and Islamic weaving centers. These fabrics rely on contrasting textures, rather than color to render patterns. A small number of tapestry-woven Byzantine silks also survive. Regulations governing the use of expensive Tyrian purple dye stuffs varied over the years. But cloth dyed in these colors was generally restricted to specific classes and was used in diplomatic gifts. Other dyes used in Byzantine silk workshops were madder, kermes, indigo, well, and Brazil wood. Gold thread was made with silver gilt strips wrapped around a silk core. Figured Byzantine silks of the 6th century show overall designs of small motifs such as hearts, swastikas, Palmettes and leaves worked into weft colors. Later, recognizable plant motifs and human figures appear. Surviving textiles document a rich exchange of techniques and iconographic themes between Constantinople and the newly Islamic textile centers of the Mediterranean and Central Asia in the years after the Muslim conquest of the 7th century. Designs of the 8th and 9th centuries show rows of roundels or medallions populated with pairs of human or animal figures reversed in mirror image on a vertical axis. Many motifs echo Sasanian designs including the tree of life, winged horses, lions, and imaginary beasts. And there are numbers of surviving pieces where specialists cannot agree between a Byzantine or Islamic origin. Fashionable patterns evoke the activities and interests of the royal court, such as hunting scenes or the quadriga. Woven textiles Of the five basic weaves used in Byzantium and the Islamic weaving centers of the Mediterranean, tabi, twail, damask, Lampus and tapestry, the most important product was the weft-faced compound twill called samite. The word is derived from Old French samit, from medieval Latin samitum, examitum deriving from the Byzantine Greek she alpha mu iota tau omicron nu hexametone, six threads. 
usually interpreted as indicating the use of six yarns in the warp. In Samite, the main warp threads are hidden on both sides of the fabric by the ground and patterning wefts, with only the binding warps that hold the wefts in place visible. Diplomatic gifts of Byzantine silk cemented alliances with the Franks. Byzantium granted silk trading concessions to the sea powers of Venice, Pisa, Genoa and Amalfi to secure naval and military aid for Byzantine territories. The influence exerted by Byzantine silk weaving was profound. Byzantine silk court ritual and ecclesiastical practices were adopted by the Franks, just as Byzantine court furnishing styles and dress codes were echoed across the Islamic world. These silks served as a form of portable wealth that could be profitably disposed of in times of need. Silks survive in Western Europe from the graves of important figures, used in book bindings, and also reliquaries. But it is clear they had a number of uses as hangings and drapes in churches and the houses of the wealthy, as well as for clothing and vestments. Anglo-Saxon England had silks from at least the late 7th century, brought back from Rome by Benedict Biscop and others. They were an essential, and easily carried, purchase for well-off pilgrims to Rome or the Holy Land, and were available in England from English traders who certainly had bases in Roman Pavia, and probably also bought from Scandinavian traders using the Baltic route. A unique special arrangement had to be made whereby the English crown paid directly a sum to Pavia in lieu of the customs duty on silk which the Pavians found too difficult or dangerous to collect from English merchants. Diplomatic gifts also cascaded down from the imperial court in Constantinople, with the rulers who received them passing many on to other rulers, and churches both in and outside their territory. Charlemagne gave not only King Offer of Mercia silks, but also the dioceses of Mercia and Northumbria, tapestry and embroidery. In addition to woven dress and furnishing fabrics, Byzantine workshops were also known for woven tapestries and richly embroidered textiles with decoration that often included figurative scenes. The most impressive example to survive is the 10th century Bamberger Gunthertusch, a woven tapestry piece over two meters square, with a mounted emperor between two female personifications. Nearly a century after it was made it was acquired by the Bishop of Bamberg in Germany, on a pilgrimage to Constantinople. He died during the journey and it was used for his shroud. Embroidered religious scenes were also used for vestments and hangings, and the famous English opus Anglicanum seems to have been heavily influenced by Byzantine embroidery. This continued late antique trends, which among other evidence are known from finds in Egyptian cemeteries, and the complaint by Saint Asterius of Amasia in around 410 about his flock in northeastern Turkey, where he says the laity decorated their clothes with religious images. They artfully produced both for themselves and for their wives and children, clothing beflowered and wrought with 10,000 objects, when, therefore, they dress themselves and appear in public, they look like pictured walls in the eyes of those that meet them, and perhaps even the children surround them, smiling to one another and pointing out with the finger the picture on the garment, and walk along after them, following them for a long time. On these garments are lions and leopards, bears and bulls and dogs, woods and rocks and hunters. You may see the wedding of Galilee, and the waterpots, the paralytic carrying his bed on his shoulders, the blind man being healed with the clay, the woman with the bloody issue taking hold of the border of the garment, the sinful woman falling at the feet of Jesus, Lazarus returning to life from the grave. In doing this they consider that they are acting piously and are clad in garments pleasing to God. But if they take my advice let them sell those clothes and honor the living image of God. Do not picture Christ on your garments. It is enough that he once suffered the humiliation of dwelling in a human body which of his own accord he assumed for our sakes. So, not upon your robes but upon your soul carry about his image. The Egyptian cemetery examples are usually in less fine textiles than silk, and are typically roundels or other simple shapes with a border and a scene inside. 
This style of design seems not dissimilar to mentions and the few survivals of religious embroidery from the West many centuries later. Some Western embroidery was imported, other pieces no doubt done locally on imported silk though other materials were used. The only survival of such work on the largest scale, the enormous Bayer tapestry is well embroidered on a plain linen background, and not technically a tapestry at all. However smaller scale figurative hangings and clothes in silk are mentioned. Decline. In 1147, during the Second Crusade, Roger II of Sicily attacked Corinth and Thebes, two important centers of Byzantine silk production, capturing the weavers and their equipment and establishing his own silk works in Palermo and Calabria. After the capture of Constantinople in 1204 by the forces of the Fourth Crusade and the establishment of the Latin Empire and other Latin states, in the Byzantine territories, the Byzantine silk industry contracted, supplying only the domestic luxury market, and leadership in European silk weaving and design passed to Sicily and the emerging Italian centers of Lucca and Venice.